What you got, Jay? Well, remember how I was looking through my auntie's old stuff? This is stuff from the 90s. Things 30-year-olds played with as kids. Crazy. Yeah, like, what in the world is this? I don't know. Let's plug it in and find out. Uh, okay. Is that a tape? Yeah. I think it goes in here. Ooh. It ate it. I'm scared, Emma. I'm Jay. And I'm Emma. Welcome to Press Play. <sighs> wow. You know, I think I remember my dad talking about this show. He watched it all the time when he was a kid, every Friday night. Oh, is this one of those 90s sitcoms where they have a problem and then everything works out perfectly in 30 minutes? Mm. It's so predictable. I bet I can tell you from the first 30 seconds how each episode will end. OK. Well, what about this one? Hmm. Easy. The main character is gonna cheat on a math test, get a perfect score, get so much praise that they feel guilty and confess. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, let me see. I think this is how you fast forward. Oh. <laughs> Told ya. Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Well, what about this one? Main character gets in a fight with a neighbor, gets a black eye, tries to cover it up with mom's makeup. Mom finds out, forces the two to make up and work it out, and they realize they have a lot in common and then become best friends. Okay, well, let me see. How are you doing this? <laughs> what can I say? I have a knack for predicting 90s sitcoms. Well. There's only one real way to see if they're as predictable as you say. I'm game. Let's do it. Three, two, one, press play. Wow! Where are we? <laughs> Emma, you should know, right? <laughs> yep, we're at a place called Chuck E. Cheese. He's a cool mouse with an attitude that serves pizza to kids. It's Friday night. We're playing skee ball because that's what people did. And our best friend is going to enter talking about pizza in three, two, one. What's up, homies? It's your best bud, Muriel. Who's hungry for some za? <gasps> Who's psyched for ski ball? We are, homie! I love ski ball. Come on, a thousand. Oh. Yes! <laughs> Tickets! <laughs> oh. I'm on my way to a big prize. Um, Jay, one problem. That was actually my last ski ball. You took it from me. Uh, I did? Yep, you did. Oh, sorry, Muriel. I guess you want these ticks, huh? Hmm. Nah, it's all good. I forgive you. And as for the tickets, you can keep them, homie. Wow. Thanks, homie. All right. Uh, uh. Now it's my last ski ball. Come on, 1,000. Let's do this. Oh, um, wait, wait, wait. I think that was actually my ski ball. Are you sure? Well, I'm sad in an exaggerated melodramatic 90s sitcom way, so I'm pretty sure. Which means those are my ticks. I'm gonna use him to buy the biggest teddy bear in the mall, and I'm gonna name him Teddy Saurus Rex. Gimme! But Jay, remember how I forgave you? Yeah, Jay, seems like you have a decision. Hey, Muriel, doesn't this remind you of a story? Wait, did you know that this was all gonna just happen? Maybe I did, maybe I did. 
It sure does remind me of a story, a fly story from the book of Matthew chapter 18. Oh. Here comes the lesson. Huh? Huh? Oh, nothing, please continue. Cool beans. Well, Jesus was teaching his friends about what the kingdom of heaven would be like. And he told them the story about a king and his servant who owed him a lot of Benjamins. Benjamins? Cash money. The servant couldn't pay, but as it turned out, the king was all that and a bag of chips. Cool, the king was cool. Ooh. He forgave the servant all of the money that the servant owed. Said he owed him nothing. Pretty fly, huh? Very fly! While the forgiven servant was getting jiggy with it. Na 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 na. He came across a man who owed him money. It was nowhere near the amount that he had owed the king, but he wouldn't forgive the debt when the man couldn't pay. Instead, he had the man thrown in jail. Homie was bugging out. As if. I think I'm getting the hang of this thing. The king heard about this and called the servant back. He said to him in Matthew 18, 32 to 33, you wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? The king didn't want to hear anymore. He was like, talk to the hand. He had the servant thrown in jail. Jesus told them this story so they would know that forgiving others is totally cool, beans, homies. Here comes the wrap up. Muriel, you forgave me and even let me keep the tickets. I should do the same for Emma. You go, Jay. We can always forgive. What's that? It means we gotta bounce, home skillet. <laughs> Wait. Emma, you knew that was going to happen, didn't you? Maybe I did, and maybe I did. <laughs> what ev's? Well, everything wrapped up nicely, didn't it? Sure did, Muriel. It sure did. Secret handshake time? Turn to your neighbor and join in. What you doing, home skillet? Well, I'm putting 90 sitcoms away. Your knowledge of them is something else. <laughs> Take a chill pill, home skillet. Stop calling me home skillet. <laughs> Let's rewind and play it back. We press play and we're in a 90s sitcom with Muriel, her best friend. She forgave Jay and told us about Matthew 18, when Jesus used a story about a king and his unforgiving servant to teach his friends about the importance of forgiveness. Jay learned a valuable lesson. Didn't you, Jay? Yes. It all wrapped up nicely with the idea that we can always forgive. Are you holding something against someone? Maybe today is the day to forgive because God has forgiven us of so much. Remember, trends come and go, but Jesus is always trending. Now it's time to drop, drop the, the verse. verse. We're dropping the verse. <laughs> is it that time already? <laughs> Here we go. What is that verse? Let's drop it. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 13, 8. One more time. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, yesterday and today, today and forever. Today. Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, yesterday and today, today and forever. forever. Hebrews 13, 8.